Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last series of your in which we're playing as that good old Governatorato del Levant. Now someone was asking me consistently if I'd play this nation, and while they don't have a lot of content, as you can see on screen, that this nation is not playable, I figured, why not do it? You never know when the desert just might take out the focus tree like they did for Algeria. But we do have a unique focus tree with Hotline Jerusalem. Since the end of WW Dose, the Levant has been one of the most troublesome areas of the newly acquired Italian Empire. Oh boy, ethnic conflicts, oh yes. Fierce resistance to Italian rule, oh no. And an inhospitable terrain have made the region into a hotbed of insurgency and rebellion. And the continuous crackdowns and repression of the past have proven ineffective now. A semblance of peace has been achieved in the Levant, as an uneasy truce has been brokered between the Italians. Haganah. On the Fatah, however, Governor Dalla Chiesa knows that such a situation is not destined to last. We must continue to solidify the existing relationships between us and our reluctant allies. Otherwise, all hope of maintaining the region, stability, will be unfortunately lost. In which we have no decisions, which kind of sucks, but this focus goes by pretty darn quickly. And actually, we start off with a relatively decent military as well. Um, let's see, we actually do have helicopters as well, which is very, very cool. Uh, actually, we could probably use some of this eventually, just because we have no military, but whatever. Jet transports, now we don't have that, now. Nah. Scout helicopters will be cool, now we're okay. We get to get some early helicopters, because we actually do have helicopter divisions, which is cool. But, what is this? Oh, Operation Masada has commenced. Well, see this pacem parabellum. If you seek peace, prepare for war. This old Roman adage was as true in the times of Scipio and Augustus as it is today, after all. Diplomacy can only go so far and the Levant simply wouldn't be able to exist as a governat of Italia without its brave garrison, which counts some among the finest men of all of the empire. By reviewing and modernizing the garrison, we can keep the Levant safe from threats both internal and external, while making sure that anyone who wishes to openly challenge the might of Italy in these lands will have to think twice before doing so. Follow it with a review of the garrison. There are numerous units that make up our garrison, but as our land-based territory doesn't require the services of the Regia Marina, most of our men are drawn from the brave soldiers of the Regio Esercito, the daring airmen of the Regia Aeronautica, and the proud Carabinieri, and sadly, the largely useless black shirts of the MVSM. With the exception of the, that last group, which has largely been phased out of active duty in the region due to their improvement in competence. The, our units are among the proudest of all of Italy, but there's still much room to improve. New doctrines, training regimes, and budget allocation plans will make sure that our garrison is able to hold fast against anything that threatens us, which is really good because we are lacking a lot of equipment. Um, actually, we're, actually, no, we're lacking mostly just map So, we'll read this very soon, but we do have a cup of coffee here. And uh, we got tanks, we got motorized, we literally have helicopter divisions, which are 12 combat with, which is not terrible. With helicopters, oh, oh I didn't realize that, we have scout copters on there too, wow, fancy. Um, let's grab some of that first, cool. And obviously we won't be able to make all this stuff, but hey, it is what it is. Cool, and the Governor of the Levant. The grand dreams of colonialism in Imperial Italy seemed to, so close to becoming reality. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the tricolor waved over the defeated British forts as the victorious Re Reggio Esercito advanced in the Middle East after Egypt Palestine soon fell. As the British lion bled under the talons of the Italian eagle while the Italian troops entered Jerusalem, ah, Rome's propaganda took no time to paint the triumph as a mighty echo of an ancient past. The glorious legions that had once brought order and peace to Judea under Vespian and Trajan have now returned to Palestine by Benito Daddy Mussolini, the Caesar of our age. I almost said Kaiser there. Of course, the reality was much different, and its taste much more bitter. Native resistance to Italian occupation was strong, and the more the Italian Empire spread far and wide on the map, the more its forces were stretched thin on the ground. F ooh, fascist plans to turn the Levant into a loyal and Italian province of the Empire by assimilating the natives were soon canned, as opposition to Italy was one of the few things capable of uniting the various ethnic, religious, and cultural groups in the region. Projects to resettle the Levant with Italians never left the drawing board, as the people of the peninsula preferred the much safer lands of the Fourth Shore, and after years of endless cycles of revolt and oppression, the new duce, Galizio Ziano, in his bid to resolve the many ailments of the Empire, finally decided that a new course of action was, of course, necessary. Enter Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa, in the duce's eyes, the young general of the Cabarinini. A Carabinieri had three characteristics that made him especially fit for the position of governor. Efficiency, demonstrated in his relatively short but dashing career. Lack of sympathy for fascist rhetoric. And most of all, a complete lack of involvement or interest in politics since the beginning of uh, Chiesa's tenure. A semblance of order returned to Levant, with the new governor agreeing to allow autonomy and a moderate level of freedom to those who were content with that, and focusing the efforts of his garrison on the more radical paramilitaries and resistance groups. An uneasy peace was built in Levant, a fickle, fragile truce built to protect the many innocent civilians in the region. 
whatever the religion or ethnicity, from the horrors of what they could very well be an endless subterranean war. And yet, peace can't last. Just look at our modern day. No comments. No comments from me about that. But that's okay. Uh, this is we have enough pee-pee. Keep spending, because we're trying to build up some civvies here. Because everything is going to go well here, no one's going to complain, nothing is going to ha bad happen to the triumvirate, I swear. Nothing bad will happen. But, let's see, academic base is improving, research facilities, kind of stagnant, poverty's getting worse, uh, X priest is going up, which is nice, and that's pretty much it for us. So, a letter from Karamah, reservit, uh, reservatismo. For the governor's eyes only, to the governor Della Chiesa in Jerusalem from the original Carabinieri Commandant Karameh. Huh, <laughs> meh. We would like to report to Your Excellency that the construction of the new HQ of Fatah in the town of Karama has been completed, and the current leader of the organization, Arafat Yasir, has taken the residence in the structure. As per Your Excellency's orders, a Kabarniri garrison was situated in the vicinities of the village, and the bridge over the River Jordan that connects the location to the West Bank is kept under watch for any unauthorized movements. The offer of Amir Hussein of garrisoning the bridge with soldiers from his own armed forces has largely been kindly declined. The loyalty of the Emir of Transjordan still is questionable at best, and he is still one of the main providers of funding for the Fatah. However, we do not believe that any direct threats are coming from his court in Amman, as his source, main source of Hussein's wealth is the oil deals between Transjordan and the ENI, which of course would become null and void should he break the treaties that bind him to us at any rate. Any move against the Emir would surely provoke a widespread insurrection, as he enjoys widespread popularity among his subjects in Transjordan, and many conservative Arabs in Palestine, interestingly. Hussein's alliance with Arafat doesn't seem to be exactly comfortable. The two have little in common, Somewhat, besides a somewhat shared goal of more independence from Italy. Regarding Arafat himself, we still recommend keeping him under close watch. Despite his young age, he enjoys his immense popularity with the Arab youths in the West Bank, and while it is true that allowing Fatah to maintain his own paramilitaries was a necessary evil, they still represent a threat, especially considering that Arafat has consistently refused to back down from his request for a full independence and native rule still. We believe that for now, breaking the truce would be against Arafat's own interests, as fortunately he places the well-being of his own people over a mad quest for vengeance, and he too fears the consequences that hostilities would inevitably bring, should they resume. In conclusion, while the current situation is far from ideal and will inevitably deteriorate in time, we would strongly advise against any offensive move against either Arafat or Hussein. The most appropriate course of action would be to continue the negotiations and buy for time, until hopefully Rome realizes the untenability of our situation in the long term. Keep Amman and Karamat under close watch, but do nothing else for now. Very cool. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Hey, look, this manpower. Yay. We're not making any divisions either, so. Cool. Assassin strikes at Hitler. Oh, no. 16 combat width is not great. I do want more paratroopers because I love paratroopers, but we don't have that many guys, so go with uh, one guy for now. Go with one. Review the garrison. And then, Com Fulgar Dal Cielo. The copper kind of feathers? Yeah, why not? The ba Bersaglieri are one of the most famous units of the Reggio Esercito, formed as a highly mobile light infantry unit all the way back in the early 19th century, even predating Italy itself as a unitary state. During the WW Dos, the Bersaglieri saw action in various theaters of the war, and later went on to become Italy's most important mechanized and armored infantry unit. Specializing in rough terrain and quick movements, the, the B Group now make up a large component of the garrison in the Levant, and by investing in these elite troops and improving on their mechanization and drilling, we can ensure that our military might in the region remains un contested and the defense. The armored cars made their way along a dirt road, proceeding straight as a ruler uh, uh, along grain fields. Farmers in dirty clothes toiled the arid earth as a scorching sun burned their skins as a kibbutz came closer and closer into view from the desert. Live fields, farms, animals, a small town, palm trees, and flowers defiant against the surrounding sand and rock. Up above, the Italian flag flew in the wind, and right next to it, on a pole just as tall, the blue and white flag with the Star of David. When Governor Della Chiesa stood up and left the car, a small band of soldiers stood to salute him. Their own uniforms kept impeccably. Their weapons old but polished to a shine, despite having just been used in training the local detachment of Haganah. Hagana. The kibbutz was ordinary, no different than all of the others Dalla Chiesa had inspected in the past, all mostly concentrated around the areas where Jewish settlement was more prominent, around Tel Aviv and Haifa, and went to the north near the Lake Tiberias, a local town hall, a school with a playground in which children chased each other and kicked a ball around laughing and shouting, a small synagogue, rows and rows of small and clean orderly houses. People of all ages walked around the streets of the village, busy in their daily mansions, kids, a first-generation native to the kibbutz, young men growing strong and healthy by working in farms and shops, and smiling elderly people, hiding in their memories the horrors they had witnessed in the past, or, and around the village. Watchtowers, barbed wire, and armed Haganah soldiers stood and watched guns at the ready. When the Italian Empire began to allow Jewish refugees from the Reich and the Levant, accepting the existence of Haganah, 
was a necessary even if unspoken part of that deal after all. Having a single defense organization dedicated to protecting and policing the kibbutzim was a better solution for both the Jews and the Italians, especially considering the Haganah's self-imposed policy of hal havlaka, or self-restraint, in other words. The Haganah never attacked, but only defended. The people of the kibbutzim, especially the elderly, know what it meant to be defenseless in the face of horror. Now, in their new home in the Levant, they would never be without a defense again. Order military patrols to steer clear of the kid kibbutzim in the region. No need to provoke the tensions, at least for now. But you never know if you not, might need to provoke them a little bit later. Also, uh, we're using TNO mod, uh, State Chester Tool mod, as well as Parallel Peace Conferences, even though the last one doesn't mean anything too much, but that's fine, whatever. Yeah, spend more. No oh, we actually, oh, look at that. We have liquid reserves. Even though we are spending more on civilian stuff, it is okay. And finish that one up. And we don't have a lot of research, but that's not too bad. The Battle of La Trun. A lot run. Uh, truck tracks, footprints, blood, Italian soldiers running around, rifles in their hands, with officers shouting orders, women crying in the streets, boys shouting insults and spitting on the ground with a soldier, while a soldier searches them and another one points a rifle at their backs. One tries to make a run for a burly Reggio. Aster Sito soldier knocks him unconscious with the butt of his rifle and the two of his teeth flying away from his mouth. And in the middle of the chaos of shouting, crying, one man still stands, staring at the still warm corpses covered with a white blanket, Governor Dalla Chiesa. Nobody knows yet how the Ergun commando managed to reach the village of Latrun, for so far into Arab territory. The Carabinieri are still busy analyzing the scene, interrogating witnesses, examining corpses. There were a few dozen and surrounded the town at night, attacking it on for Ergun. Latrun has a symbolic meaning as it sits on the only road connecting Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, but otherwise it's only one of many tiny Arab villages scattered around Palestine. Perhaps this is why Ergun expected no resistance. The commando, numbering a few dozens, uh, planned to attack at dawn, sweeping into the village and causing mayhem before the Italians or anyone else had time to react. Instead, what they found was a sleeper cell, the A&M, which had set up a shop long ago in Latrun. The battle broke out immediately, and evolved into house-by-house -house fighting when Ergun units managed to enter the village. Gunfire was heard for hours before the, the closest Italian division was able to encircle Latrun and mop up the rem remnants of the Ergun commando and the A&M Fedayin. Numerous civilians lost their lives in the short but violent battle, but among both Ergun and A&M soldiers, casualties were extremely high and Italian troops even managed to take prisoners from both sides. A rather rare occurrence. Ironically, a tragedy such as this proved hel itself helpful. Dalla Chiesa turned away and looked at the soldiers surrounding him. Something had to be done. Take care of the wounded civilians and set up a defensive perimeter. No new orders will arrive shortly and come Fulgora dal Cielo. A consistent part of our soldiers are made up of the paratroopers drawn from the Fulgora and Nembo divisions, the, who gained their fame during World War II for their victorious exploits against the British and troops of, e of Egypt. These soldiers are not only elite troops, but their nature makes them capable to strike anywhere at any time, providing an excellent rapid response to any kind of threat. Together with the Regia Aeronautica, the Paras give us control over the skies by expanding airfields and further drilling our paratroopers. We can truly exploit this advantage and ensure that those who dare raise arms against us will receive a swift punishment from above. Scopi e metodi del Argon zvai liumi beretz Israel. I swear, I'm really good at pronunciation sometime. As you know, Ergun, officially known as the National Military Organization in the Line of Israel, has a clandestine paramilitary and terrorist movement operating the entirety of the Levant. It was founded in 31 from a small core of hardline Zionists and expanded slowly, absorbing smaller Zionist groups. Their ideology can be summed up in three points. First, every Jew has the right to enter Palestine. Second, only active retaliation could stop the Arabs from encroaching a right on rightful Jewish land. Third, only Jewish armed forces can assure a Jewish state. Their goal is simple, to turn the entirety of the Levant into a Jewish state. They don't claim just Palestine either. Their names include Transjordan as well. They're not afraid to, of, to extensively use violence against both Italian soldiers and Arab civilians. Their organization is rigid, with a well-organized military hierarchy, and especially shadowy. They have contacts in, the, in many kibbutzim, the Jewish communities, and Haganah units scattered around the Levant, and every single Jew in the Governorate could possibly be a member or supporter of Urgun. Well, we do know the names of some of Urgun's major leaders, including the commander Mechem Begin. We have very little actual information that allows us to strike them precisely. They are a dangerous enemy hiding behind every corner, every stone, and they will not hesitate to pull the trigger if they have you in your sights. Dalek, he has a stop. The Kara Beniri, generals and officers gathered in the room and stood silent. Maps, diagrams, charts, and photographs were hung on the walls and scattered on the table of the dimly lit room as cigarette smoke filled the air. Of course, the traditional counterinsurgency campaign would be a disaster. There's no way to tell apart an Ergun affiliate with any average Haganah soldier or even any ordinary Jew. It would result in a massacre and would break any goodwill existing between us and the Haganah, eventually increasing Ergun's popularity among the Jews. A new tactic has to be employed. Dismissed. <sighs> you gotta love the Middle East. Cool. And hey, more liquid reserves, not bad. Soon enough, we'll have no debt. We've got a lot of PP too. 
too bad we can't do anything about it, but someday, hopefully, this uh, this nation will get more content and maybe some other paths. But Raporo, so Harak al Kwamimin al Arab, for the governor's eyes only. To the governor from the regional Kabaraniri command in Latrun, we would like to report to your excellency that the interrogations of captives taken in the following events in Latrun have provided us with valuable info about the nature of the armed Palestinian resistance movements. After extensive application of persuasive interrogation methods, we've managed to learn that despite acting under a single name, the Fedayim, fighting for the Harakin, have actually no idea about the overall operational status, tactical plans, or even composition of the ANM using units from different from their own. This has led us to conclude that the ANM is organized in a loose and decentralized network of cells each acting on their own, and largely independent from another. The chairman of the ANM, George Habash, is currently suspected to be hiding elsewhere in the Lebanese highlands and doesn't seem to have much control over the organization. While well, nominally a communist movement, the ideological purity of the ANM seems shaky at best. When interrogated on the topic, the Latrun captives demonstrated only an extremely cursory knowledge of the works of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and other classical or classics of communist thought, and it seemed to be motivated above all else by Arab nationalist, anti-Italian, and anti-Zionist rhetoric. We're led to believe that the ANM is in fact not a single movement, but a loose coalition of numerous pre-existing cells and organizations, united by their opposition to Italian rule and a decentralized chain of command. While apparently a weakness, this characteristic is also the ANM's greatest strength. Such a movement is effectively impossible to decapitate, and focusing on eliminating one cell will do nothing against the organization at large, as its other parts can continue operating autonomously. Well, we were not able to effectively confirm or deny the existence of ties between the ANM cells and the Fatah. The Latrun captives have been hospitalized following the interroga interrogation, and will be transferred to the closest internment camp after they recover. File this report in this archives and Kabaraniri primacy. The Kabaraniri, Carabiniri are the national gendarme of Italia, formed in the early 19th century by the Kingdom of Sardinia Piedmont decades before the unification of Italy. Since then, they acquired <clears throat> more and more prestige as a low and versatile force who proved its worth in combat roles, law enforcement, and military police, having their own mechanized, armored, and even paratrooper divisions. Formerly part of the Regi Regio Esercito, the Carabiniri Carabiniri, largely of their own autonomous command structure, and have always been present in large numbers in the Levant, with Governor Dalla Chiesa himself coming from the ranks of the Carabiniri. The relative autonomy of the Carabiniri means that, especially here in the Levant, they're rather uninvolved in politics and scheming that tends to happen in higher command in Rome, and their general lack of sympathy for fascism is all the more reason why they should have been kept firmly in place as a cornerstone of the garrison. Operation Masada uh, Chiesa drank the last sip of coffee, now disgustingly lukewarm, and put the cup back on his desk, scattered on his desk, piles of documents, reports, interrogation logs, photographs, maps, all marked with coffee stains and pen markings and annotations. In this kibbutz near Haifa, there might have been an Ergun commander disguised as a Haganah sergeant. This remote village in Transjordan could be the location of an a and hidden arsenal, and at least a dozen different dots on the map of Palestine could be the location of the next Latrun massacre. There are many in the Levant who hate Italy and everything it stands for, but those who are willing to pick up arms fueled by that hate usually hate someone for even more. Divide at Impera, the Romans said, and no place is more divided than the Italian Levant. There's only one way to deal with the A&M and Ergun, and that is making them deal with each other, while at the same time making sure that the thin line protecting the civilians from the chaos is always occupied by an Italian soldier. The people of the Levant will learn that we are the only hope for peace in the country, and that they'll have to work with us if they hope to bring an end to the bloodshed, and God knows these lands, these people have already seen too much blood. The governor gathered the necessary documents into one large envelope. In it was a plan to ensure that the garrison could keep the Levant under control without excessive cost and money or lives, just for a few more years. Many in Rome wouldn't like it, and perhaps the goons in the PNF would should be left unaware of the finer details after all. Siano would surely understand this is for the greater good of Italy. Chiesa closed the envelope and looked once again at the letters printed on the outside. Operation Masada. If everything has to stay the same, then everything has to change. Nice. So the situation is intricate. Uh, controls the region, and truth has been forced to compromise with a Jewish self-defense paramilitary Haganah led by Rabim, with an Arab organization, Fatah, composed of a leftist wing by Yasir Arafat, and of a moderate wing led by Emir Hussein of Transjordan. So we gotta keep these two groups friendly, as much as possible. There's another problem, the radicals on both the Arab and Jewish side. Ergun is a Zionist and nationalist paramilitary led by Begin and Harakayim, a coalition of Arab nationalists and commies led by George Habash. Okay. If unchecked, their bloodshed might cause increased radicalization amongst both the Arabs and Jews. Well, that's not good. Negotiations favor nobody. Pitifully weak, pitifully weak, pitifully weak. Palestinian Liberation Front. Can we say that on YouTube? I just did. I don't care. Cool. So, oh, we'll try to keep people as happy as possible until they want to kill each other more. So, oh, let's just tip the scales and negotiate. Oh, we can choose each one. I kind of want to go Jewish, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, no effect. 
the northern border. Yeah, you know what? Let's go do this. Let's keep doing this way. Expand SIM operations. In these difficult and complicated times, Intel is a matter of life and death. Italy's military intelligence service, the Servizio Informazioni Militari, has been active for decades in every corner of the vast Italian empire, and some places more efficiently than others, often in tandem with the Carabinieri. Or Carabinieri. Without the SIM, we might as well be deaf and blind, and some worrying early reports have arrived describing movements along the Turkish border. That's probably nothing, but we must always keep our spies and agents of the SIM on high alert, just in case. You never know what the Turks might do. They're cool and all, but they might go a little crazy from time to time. So we have a third, 33% chance of success, massive success, and failure. So that's not terrible. Check out these guys. They're, they're so weak as well, so... Stage battles? I kind of like that. Wins? Wins. Stalemate. Choosing our targets. So discord between factions. False flags. Oh, cool. Assassinate. Ooh. I kind of want to do that. But if they're pitifully weak, I don't think we need to do it just... Oh, never mind. They're moderately powerful. Argon and Harakin. Hmm. Let's sow discord between those two. We will attempt to sow discord between the various factions opposed to our rule. But given our limited resources, we only have the ability to go after one group or the other. Thus, we need to choose. Should we attempt to infiltrate the Argun and sow discord among the ranks or go after the Arab nationalist movement? Uh, we, well, I don't know, the Jews are okay for now. Let's go to the AMN, let's see what happens. Because <laughs> no matter who I choose, people are not going to like it. <laughs> uh, Discord. Oh, you should join my server. Our good members leave the organization. Our attempts at infiltration have been a success. We have successfully instigated infighting within our good ranks, leading to many in the organization joining the moderates of the Haganah or simply abandoning the movement altogether. The good have been badly weakened by our success and should pose much less of a th problem in the near future. So it's a pitifully weak, and I guess we can do, um, leak information. Let's do another one. Uh, actually, maybe I should do that one first. Let's do leak information. As part of our efforts to play both the Argun and a &M against each other, we will leak information about their rivals to one of their organizations. Such info, however, will give the, the, the position one of the, our well-fortified outposts, hopefully allowing us to draw either the a &M or Argun into the open where we can inflict a major defeat. However, we must choose which organization do we leak the information to. <laughs> we need to teach those Jews a lesson. Argun attacked. Well, we get Harakin, as well as Argun. Success! Argun has taken the bait and launched a major assault on one of our fortified positions. Having revealed themselves in the open, we were able to bring or bear our heavy weapons and fire support, decisively crushing their attack. Their Argun strength has been badly affected by the failed attack, and their activity in the weeks and months ahead will likely be heavily curtailed. Great! We just spent a lot of PP. So let's save up some more PP because everyone's going to get stronger and stronger probably really quickly. But at least we get two a day, which is really nice, actually. As we're focusing on the debt. That's not really good for de debt interest, but annual GDP growth is not looking great. As long as they stay weak, we're okay. Negotiations. What happens if we don't favor anybody? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool if we could just, just not favor anybody here, so. <sighs> SIM. Control Fata. Can you, are we forced to choose one side? Because I don't mind doing both if we can. I don't, we don't have enough time for that. Since the, op the negotiations between Italy and the other group is going to fail eventually, but... Um, they're so weak, which is good. The northern border, just in case. The northernmost part of the governor of the Levant has always received much less attention as the rest of the region. Not as oil-rich as Transjordan, not as troublesome as Palestine, southern Lebanon, is inhabited largely by Shia Arabs, and the gentle hills of the region are dotted by small garrisons and outposts. <clears throat> While in the northeastern regions of the Jabal al-Druz, the rough mountains and hills are inhabited by the Druze people, which hasn't really caused us much trouble in the past, and thus the entire area is loaded in the way of garrisons. However, with the recent news of the trouble in the Triumvirate and now proved Turkish movements in Syria and northern Lebanon, we have to act fast. The northern border must be fortified patrol, and we must be ready for anything coming away from Turkey. We already have enough problems of our own without a foreign invasion. Further, complicating matters. Alright, are they... Hak Harakin? Harakayin. I don't know, something like that. Um, maybe give it one more month, because I don't know. It's fine if they're moderately powerful. I do want to do the stage of battle with them. So to see if anyone just like gets really weak. So if the Ragoon gets even stronger, then it's fine with us. Nice. Alright, so let's go to the Jewish side first. Yesh, Matzav, empower these guys and weaken Ragoon. Oh, this will. Oh, no, let's do the other side first, just because they're already kind of strong. The winds cannot shake the mountain. This Arabic motto will encapsulate the fierce spirit of the resistance of the Palestinians, and of Fatah. Found as a major Arab organization in the country following an uneasy alliance, while its main goal is independence for an Arab state in the Levant in opposition to Zionism. Many in Fatah would like to see the creation of a democratic state, while more conservative Arabs look with favor towards Jans Jordan and its autocratic emir. Well, the majority of Fatah supports its leader, Yasser Arafat, who is committed of supported of democracy. A vast amount of funding for the organization comes from the deep coffers of Amir Hussein. <clears throat> 
gave him a vast influence over the movement. This uncomfortable situation is nonetheless mitigated by truce we managed to agree upon with Fatah. But there's so much to be done if we want the peace to hold. Weaken Harakian. Kian. Two scales in favor of Fatah. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, see, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's still June and... Well, let's do that one anyways. Oh, we can still keep going this way. Oh, oh. Tall cedar trees. And... Let's see. Do they get stronger? Um, well, I guess if it's going to be like this, they're going to be weakened anyways, so that's okay with us for now. Tall cedar trees? Yes, please. <clears throat> Lebanon is a land of staggering diversity, both in its terrain and people. The mountainous interior gives way to the gentle hills and rolling plains towards the coast, with large and important cities dotting the territory. While numerous ethnic and religious groups inhabit the region, including Greeks, Armenians, Arabs, Alawites, Druze, and more, most of the population in southern Lebanon is made up of the Shia Arabs, but numerous refugees from the north escaped southwards across the border to Tyre and other cities to escape Turkish oppression. Lebanon will be a first line of defense in case of Turkish aggression, and we've seen, we have an asset that Turks don't. The people. Many are wary of Turkey's oppressive regime and harsh stance towards ethnic and religious minorities, and many would be willing to take up arms against the invaders. By putting guns in the right hands and organizing the right militias, we can ensure that Lebanon will be turned into a meat grinder for Turkish troops, who will find themselves surrounded by partisans and guerrillas at every step they take. Nice. Oh, nice. They actually already built a city, nice. Maybe we should probably be building up more military factories, but hey, it is what it is. They're so powerful. Huh. Hey, improved computer machine. Nice, 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 nice. Thank you. So now they're weak and they're still... Huh. Favor Fatah. Alright, well, we'll see what happens. And then reinforce Jabal al-Druz. I'm probably saying that wrong. During the WW dose, Italy's lofty imperial dreams encompass the entirety of the Middle East, including the whole of Syria. Of course, actually enforcing these clans was a tall order, as the other axis power, specifically Turkey, had other plans. Just as the Italian troops entered Syria from the south, Turkish soldiers were racing southwards from the north, smashing through allied lines in a deadly pincer movement. In the end, the Italian-Turkish border was drawn uh, where the armies had met, and the only southern region of Jubal al druz remained in Italian hands. As a mountainous, rocky, and arid region with few important towns, the region is dotted by villages inhabited by the Jews' people, a religious minority which has historically been content to work with foreign overlords in exchange for a degree of autonomy. With the Turkish threat now looming from the north, the region is, however, a critical weak spot, and we must make sure that the region is impregnable to any invader. New fortifications must be built, exploiting the terrain to our advantage, and the local population must be convinced that taking up arms against the Turks is in their best interest if they don't want to deal with an overlord far more impressive than us. IME.45.desk. Oh boy. Where in the de- What? What? Uh... Well, bad words! <laughs> okay, we, oh, we got some black shirts. We love the black shirts, don't we? Well, that ain't too good. Wait, uh, do we, where were them, right? <clears throat> Us and them. Um, oh, oh crap, we can't even do that one. Oh, crap. Blood Saint Sam. Our worst fears came true. With the collapse of the triumph burden, the sudden worsening of Italian Turkish relations, uh, the war is in the air, and yet we didn't expect it so soon. Our soldiers are valiant and well-equipped, but it is a force centered around its counterinsurgency rather than conventional warfare, and the Turkish forces are stronger in numbers, threatening to overwhelm us. A static traditional defense would be our doom. Eventually, we would get overrun by a Turkish black bull charging away. Instead, we should focus on a strategy of asymmetric warfare, using counterattacks, guerrilla warfare, commando operations, and other such tactics to take down to take down our enemy. However, waging a war might be impossible without the support of the peoples of the Levant, and getting the Jews and the Palestinians to fight alongside us is vital to our war effort. Why can we not make a front line here? That is very weird. Um, in the meantime, it doesn't matter, I guess. Can we just go straight on in? If we can't, I'm going to send you guys into here. I wonder if we can actually, like, encircle these guys at all. That'd be really good if we could, but I kind of doubt it. Um, if you guys can go up there, too, that'd be really good. 49, get you guys up here, too. Get these guys going attacking as well. we got to move fast. Yes, yes. Oh, they're trying to attack us. No, no, no. You're not going to do that, son. Bloodstained sin. Operation Palermo. Oh, more defense. Rally the Israelis. Rally the Palestinians. 
Uh, let's do the Israelis right now. The Jews of Levant are a relatively small population, but they do possess a remarkable fighting spirit. Numerous Levantine Jews possess military experience as partisans and guerrilla fighters in the territories occupied by the Reich and the leadership of Haganah. It was formed of seasoned commanders of numerous battles both in the Reich and against Afayadin uh, Fediain here in the Levant. By using the military prowess of the Levantine Jews to our advantage, we might be able to get the edge we need to take down the Turkish menace, which threatens them even more than it threatens us. Which is good. Let's go, let's go, go, go. No, there's soldiers there. You gotta win. You should be able to get in there fast enough. Come on, let's move, let's move. Just do not get encircled, do not get encircled. Let's go, we got him, we got him. There's three and there's two, so that equals five usually. That's nice, that's very nice. Help out here, help out before they lose. Put a lot of pressure on these guys. If they come in, that's fine. Doesn't really matter to us. I'll take them out. I'll take them out. That doesn't matter at all. Rally the Israelis. Good, good, good. Um, let's get Operation Pal Palmyra. While they were in the ancient past, these lands are the Empire's eastern frontier, a periphery, but a vital one, a land of conflicts, contradictions, faith, brotherhood, betrayal, and war. Rome's hegemony over the Middle East hinges on the Levantine lands, and the rise of Turkish power here will have ripple effects that might prove disastrous for the whole empire. To avoid this catastrophe, our high command has drafted Operation Palmyra, a defense plan designed to exploit our few advantages and achieve victory against a Turkish juggernaut. It will not be easy, but it is our only hope. Nice, we got more Jews here. Not very many Jews, but hey, you know what? I'll take them. Well, I'll gladly take them all. Come on, come all, kill off those Turkish soldiers. Oh, don't lose, don't lose, don't lose. You've got to hurry up. God dang it, you got in there. Are you kidding me, man? Why can we not form a front line earlier? Why? Alright, let's just get a defensive line going. Because we're going to get a couple more soldiers. We've lost 2,000. We've killed off 31,000 Turks, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh, more black shirts? Thank God. We got more black shirts now. Um. False flag. We get you this one a little bit. Oh, we need more. Oh, baby. No wonder we're not doing well. We go and need some fuel from Daddy Italy. There you go. Operation Pomeria, a mobile defensive line, maneuver warfare. Uh, rally the Palestinians. After the end of WW2, much of the Arab world ended up under the influence of two Axis powers, Italy and Turkey. However, while in recent times, Italy generally attempted to rule the relatively gentle hand, respecting existing institutions such as the Egyptian monarchy, Turkey's reign over Syria and northern Le Lebanon was especially brutal with harsh repression and violence being common. For this reason, the Arabs of the Levant are wary of what could happen, or would happen, should Turkey become to become the new hegemonic power in the region, and motivating them to fight for us should be fairly easy. We will begin talks with Emir Hussein and with Yasir Arafat to coordinate the actions of Arab forces against the Turkish menace. Nice. Yeah, still okay here. Uh, are you guys really attacking there? I'm not so sure about that. Just keep defending for now. We want to get everyone on the border. Uh, yeah, that's six divisions. That's a lot of divisions. All right. Uh, you guys go straight on in if you can. Where are the choppers? Honestly, I need you up here. Uh, I'm not going to risk getting encircled here, so. Civil Rights Act, cool. Getting in there, too. 43, not bad. Not bad. Italy, please stop killing off your own soldiers. Please don't be so incompetent, Italy. Please, please, please. Rally the Palestinians, thank God. Mobilize the Arab Legion. Let's do the night squads. A warfare between Arab groups and Haganah soldiers in the Levant was often a dirty affair. The honorable ways of traditional warfare left aside and favored more underhanded and far more effective techniques and doctrines for this reason. Among Haganah troops, there are many who are experienced in night warfare and time nighttime raids. For organizing a new Haganah special force, the special night squads, and sending them against the Turkish troops and bases, we will be able to spread a terror among the enemy, for they shall know that death comes for them from the darkness of the night. Good. More soldiers for the front, please. <laughs> Uh, let's go with this one, definitely. Uh, do we have any other upgrades, maybe? Carlo? Oh, logistics. Ooh, that would be really good to get, probably. And we need more command power and more upgrade slots, but whatever. And for you... If, yeah, yeah, you want to do that one. There you go. Now, hold here. Can you actually attack and be successful? If you send this other division in, you might be able to do okay. Give me one tank division. Come on, break through them. It looks like we'll slowly be able to push in, which would be nice. Oh, you have another chopper up here, huh? Head on into. Good, good, good. Come on, come on. Break them, break them. We've got them encircled once again. Help out our Italian brother, brothers. Are they a brother? Are they a bunch of brothers? Nice. Special Knights, squads, and then mobilize the Arab Legion. 
Uh, let's do this one. We do Al Hasiafa. Jointly led by Yasir Arafat and Khalil, uh, Khalil Wazir, Al Asifa, meaning the storm is the main military branch of the Fatah, formed as parts of the accord held between the Italian authorities and the Fatah leadership. While only a small force, the Al Asifa is large, made, made up is largely made up of former Fed, Fedayeen and Harakayeen, who ended up supporting Arafat or newly recruited Palestinian youth. Its popularity ever increasing among the Arabs of the Levant. As new recruits are flocking to Al Asifa, driven by our calls to fight against invading Turks, we can turn them into powerful weapons against our enemies. Using them as guerrillas and militias, we only need to give them weapons and ammo and send them on their way to fight the Turks. Arabs and Jews fighting together. Oh, Jesus Christ, four combat weapons um, against the Turks. Gotta love it. Help them out. Actually, what is air superiority really bad for us? Okay. Oh, do we have actually planes here? Oh, I actually realized that earlier. Okay. Oh, you transport planes. Well, that sucks. Yeah, uh, you guys just kind of hold. Do we? Oh, we have no other planes. Oh, crap. Daddy Italy, can we have some planes, please? Oh, they're actually attacking us here, huh? That's not ideal. But those four divisions are going to die. Help them out. Help them out. Nice. And a mobile defense line. The Turkish army has several advantages over us. It's strong, well armed, well experienced, and most of all, it's concentrated in Syria, which means it's able to concentrate its strength in a single point, potentially smashing through our defensive lines. For this reason, attempting to hold fast against the Turks in a conventional manner would be likely to result in disaster. We'd inevitably get overrun by the superior numbers and firepower. Instead, we should focus on a highly mobile defense strategy, using a system of tactical retreats, counterattacks, ambushes, and flanking movements to snarl the Turkish troops, cut off their supply lines, and finally crush them in a joint operations attack. Good. Okay, we done it. We've killed off 67,000 of them. And of course we won. Of course we won. Peace of the Middle East, huh? They ran out of steam, huh? That's weird that it just automatically happens. I mean, we did well. I I'll be honest. They thought we couldn't do very well here, but we won. I wish we'd we would have pushed it all the way up there, but it's fine. It is what it is. I thought we did really well. We didn't lose that many guys. And, uh, yeah. Oh, are we done? But we're automatically told no more fuel, but the war's over. The Jerusalem conference will begin in six months. Okay, then. Sage of battle? We could do that. Uh, well, okay, well, that's gone then. I guess we'll keep going down the tall cedar trees. Sure, why not? Cedar trees, yeah, okay. Um, I guess we'll target these guys first. Not bad. Let's see what happens. Success! The Harakin took some losses. Boys, pack it in. <laughs> pack it in, boys. Cool. Keep spending, I guess. And we'll cut down military spending. That wasn't too bad. I think we did really well there. Really, really well. We didn't even have to use our ships. And then we'll do this one next as well. Because even though, well, control Fatah. Yesh Matsov. The situation, this is how many Jews in the Levant refer to the somewhat peculiar circumstances they live in. Many of them were already here before World War II, but a significant wave of Jewish immigrants reached the shores of Palestine um, during... Uh, the uh, chaos that rocked the Nazi Empire in the 50s, as Italy decided to let them in and give them a place to settle in their ancestral homeland, giving, hoping to gain a loyal ally in governing the region. Reality was much different, of course. The Jews weren't interested in becoming loyal subjects of Italy, but much preferred to keep them to themselves. And now, some half a million Jews live in the territories of the Italian Levant, most of them concentrated in northern Palestine. Keeping the majority of the Jewish population content with their rule is fundamental to maintaining peace in the region, as the only way to contain the spread of Argun and radical Zionist ideas. Here's some power of Harakim, but whatever. <laughs> Didn't cut them in the dead at all. Um, I guess we'll target them again, I guess. Success! It says it's successful, but it doesn't seem very successful. Cool. Not bad. We have a lot of guys now. 16 divisions still. Very nice. Um, I don't want to train them just because we're probably going to be missing a lot of equipment anyways, but still. Try to get early helicopters, improve scout copters. We don't even have anything for infantry equipment. Wow, this sucks. And they're still moderately weak, which is fine with us, but still. Um, yeah, let's do that one. I'll get more stability. So we'll do this one next, and then get some more stability, which would be nice. And then we'll keep going down either way here, so. The Jewish National Council, huh? Greatly weakened Argun. The Arab Higher Committee. Okay, well, that sounds nice. You know day left? Cool. Powerful. Oh, I'll target them. A failure? The crap backfired, yo. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Now we need way more PP. Sage of battle? 
Uh, let's do a, a false flag operation. Yep, pitifully weak. Uh, Leahy. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, well, whatever. And false flag. As part of our efforts to weaken the extremist groups who infest the Levant, we've often resorted to less than savory methods, for instance, using the false flag attacks to implicate our other organizations and deflect their attention away from us. Given our limited resources, on top of the fact we do not want to raise undue suspicion, it's best we only pick one faction to target, giving us the option between taking either the Argun or a and Failure? Are you kidding me? So, oh, no, a and failure. No, no, a and failure. And success. Our men were able to complete or complete their objectives without any undue interruptions, dealing significant damage to the A&M while at the same time implicating the Leahy. Already, the Arabs are launching reprisal raids against people who have launched an unprovoked attack on their organization and drastically reduced their activity against us. What fools? Wait. What happened to the Haganah? The Haganah's gone. These guys are still powerful. Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, well. And Lions Imperius, but after we get some more research. In ancient times, the border of the Roman Empire, known as Limes, was something more resembling a vaguely defined frontier where commerce and movement of peoples and goods constantly took place under the ages of the Caesars. Over time, the Limes became increasingly militarized as the empire's might faltered and civil strife rocked it from within, while many of its enemies prepared to exploit its weakness and descend upon it. Now, Italy's faltering empire has their own Limes, and it's here in this rocky, arid lands of the Levantine borders, with a Turkish invasion now clearly coming for us. We must stand and fight, for even if we are nothing but a governor in the far reaches of the empire, victory or defeat here will have far-reaching consequences for all of Italy, and perhaps the entire world. They're powerful. We gotta get rid of them now. Cut. We get, uh, that's fine with us for now. And cut some more. There you go. Nice. Not great, but not bad. So after that, we can... Yes. The command structure of the Fatah is set up as a pyramid, with Arafat and its inner circle located in the organization's HQ in Karama, and numerous local subunits and sections scattered around the Arab communities of the Levant. Its organizational scheme is quite complex, with numerous wings and branches devoted to different tasks, and its nature making it a nearly omnipresent present presence in some regions, such as in the West Bank and the, of the River Jordan. While a direct move against Fatah would pro prompt, or prompt a wide-scale insurrection, we must continue to keep a close watch on their operations around the Levant to make sure that we're in control of the situation, and worst of all, that the Fatah isn't working with the more extremist Palestinian cells located within the a and Nice. And then new Palestinian villages? Weaken them? Yeah, why not? With the introduction of modern agricultural techniques, the population of Palestine has experienced a boom in the 20th century, mid 20th century, which further exacerbated tensions in the region. As large amounts of Palestinians were invicted to make way for Jewish settlers, numerous Arabs are now relegated in impoverished slums around the largest Arab cities of the Levant, such as Jerusalem and Gaza, of course. Such places are breeding grounds for radicalism and violent extremism. We must invest in the construction of new Palestinian villages furnished with all the commodities to ensure their livelihood, easy access to water, irrigation networks, and well kept roads. By showing the Arabs of Palestine that we are working for their sake, we'll at least convince them to at least resent us at least a little bit less. This seems like a good idea. Cool. Keep building up civvies. Jews and Arabs love civvies. And expand local autonomy? Yeah. Tip scales in favor of those guys. Meet with Hussein? I guess. We might as well. At least we get some more manpower and stability and political power. So we want to keep beating the crap out of these guys. At least their strength at least. So They're powerful. Um, stage a battle between these two? Assassinate a terrorist leader? Why not? As part of our efforts to crack down on the terrorist movements afflicting the Levant, we shall attempt to assassinate a high-ranking leader. However, given our limited resources and scarcity of sources, we can only go after one of the two organizations, pretty much, when you choose Urgun or a and a and Success. After dozens of hours tracking down and identifying a senior officer within the a and ranks, we are able to successfully identify one of the establishments that he frequented. One of our gunmen were able to close within uh, several meters of uh, officer and get off several rounds with, from a concealed pistol before disappearing into the crowd. The A&M officer was critically wounded and passed within minutes. Such a brazen assassination of one of their senior leaders has baffled the effect of the A&M, weakening their movement in the weeks and months to come. Mission accomplished. And now they're down and moderately powerful? Not bad. And then uh, expand local autonomy. Probably. Oh, budget boost. Yeah, get more PP. Many Arabs have been very discontent at her decision to grant a degree of autonomy to the Jewish settlements in the Levant, which is, of course, perceived as unfair and unequal choice, and a clear sign of Italy's Zionist goals. At the same time, governing the Palestinian territories has proven extremely difficult and costly, both in money and in lives, now that the situation is a bit more stable. We can finally attempt to expand democratic representation and autonomy for local Palestinian communities, by allowing them to express their voice on some local matters and forming democratically elected councils. Of course, the goons in Rome don't need to hear about this. And I guess we're just really empowering Fatah here, which is... Fine with me, I don't really care. Um, I just want to make sure these guys are 
kind of some more suppressed, so. Too bad we can't get more decisions about these guys. Oh, never mind. There you go. I'll stage a battle. Our recent efforts to pit the AM and Nagoon against each other has backfired. We had hoped that while neither organization would have emerged victorious, as it just settles, it's clear that AM has won a major victory. Having decisively defeated their Nagoon forces in the region, the AM is consolidating their resources and solidifying their control in the area, much to our chagrin. The AM will pose an increased threat in the near future until our forces can bring them in line. Gosh dang it. Oh well. Whatever. And if the Harakin wins out, then it is what it is. I just want to explore this nation and see what it has to offer, but meet with Hussein. His H Highness Hussein bin Talal bin Abdullah bin Hussein. Oh, by the grace of Allah, Emir of Transjordan is our most loyal friend and our most dangerous enemy among the Arabs of the Levant, a son of the notable noble house of the Hashemites, who claims descent from the Prophet, whom Muhammad himself. He has distinguished himself as an exceedingly skilled and cunning ruler and able negotiator. He was able to get in good Italy's good graces by welcoming Rome's domination of the Levant and by offering to help E and I take over and expand oil extraction in Transjordan, using the Prophet to modernize his realm and solidify his rule. While we are forced to depend on his uneasy ally, Emir Hussein is no sincere friend, a known financier of Fatah. We suspect that the Emir is a grand ambition and is willing to use every dirty trick in the book to expand his already large influence. As the old saying goes, keep your friends close and your enemies closer, and we should keep Hussein as close as we can and hug him to death. Massive success. The Harakain got effing annihilated. Lol, sucks to suck. <laughs> Bash the Habash. Sunglasses. That's funny. Oh, you gotta love the devs. Well... You gotta love some of the devs, we'll put it like that. The community is weird, but the devs, some of them are kind of, uh, questionable in a good and bad way. <sighs> Happy 1863, but review the Arab Legion. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed and the British took over the supremacy in this part of the Middle East, the Arab Legion was founded as the armed forces of the newly formed Emirate of Transjordan, which is to be a vassal state of London. Thus, the Arab Legion was formed out of native soldiers, but led by British officers. When the victorious troops defeated perfidious Albion, we saw no reason to eliminate the Arab Legion, and instead simply took it over with Italian officers replacing the British. Now the Arab Legion garrisons Transjordan, acting as law enforcement, patrolling the western deserts and putting down banditry in the region. Whilst the ranks and foul soldiers are much more loyal to Hussein rather than us, sending more Italian officers to the ranks while turning it into a more effective fighting force. It's the only way to keep Transjordan and its vital pipelines and oil fields safe. Episode Power Goon? Oh. Oh well, whatever. There you go. Not bad. Oh, the Institute Crisis, goodbye. Infrastructure in Transjordan? Oh, that'd be really good to get more infrastructure. Add three infrastructure, wow, that's a lot. Oh, there goes Madagascar, goodbye. Infrastructure. Oil is a black blood of the Empire's economy, but it needs veins in which to flow. Transjordan is rich oil reserves, but little in the way of industrialization, which makes building refineries a tall order. Crude oil must be shipped all the way across the Mediterranean, or funneled all the way to the vast refineries in the Italian possessions in the Persian Gulf. Both these things require kilometers and kilometers of pipelines and roads built across a harsh desert landscape in the hills of Palestine, which if left unpatrolled are an easy target for bandits and terrorists alike. We must make sure that from the vital infrastructure that brings oil away from Transjordan is kept in good shape, and our economic resources will greatly benefit from this. Nice. Moderately powerful. Oh, even the Jews are more powerful now. Oh, well, maybe that's not good to power them. Uh, that's to, uh, resolve land disputes. We lose some stability, but we get a lot of PP. One of the major causes of contention and discord between the Jews and other populations of the region, chiefly the Arabs, is land issues. When the Jews were settled in the Levant, they were assigned some of the most fertile and rich lands in the region, much to the dismay of the native Arabs who wished to keep it for themselves. To further complicate matters, in many cases, Jewish settlements started to encroach on lands which hadn't been granted to them, further escalating conflicts. By setting up an ad hoc bipartisanship, or bipartisan commission of surveyors, agronomists, and legal experts, we can attempt to peacefully resolve such land conflicts, evicting squatters, and offering compensations for those who have been deprived of their land. Cool. Now the Jews got too much influence. Yeah, they're moderately, they're powerful. These guys are moderately powerful, so. Uh oh. Oh no. Well, crap. Well, we got rid of that. God dang it. The Jerusalem Conference. IME, the Jerusalem Conference desk. Cool. Let's talk to Ugun. Ugun got effing annihilated. Oh, it sucks to suck. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. They're so powerful, so. And then the right to life. I am E, the right to life desk. The first round. The conference begins. Palestinian, Israeli, and Italian delegations have all convened in Jerusalem to finally bring about peace in the Levant. Organized by the efforts of the Prime Minister, the conference has hoped to bring about the lasting solution to the numerous issues plaguing the Italian Middle East, namely the Palestinian Israeli tensions that dominate society. While some have criticized this as a move for re election, our cause is valiant, and is part of our obligations as a member of the global community. It remains unclear if the conference has any chance of succeeding, but for so long, as all entered with good faith, there still might be some chance for peace. Probably not. 
I don't know how long this is going to last, but uh, we might actually end this soon. The water question? Fudgy boost, keep boosting it up, baby boy. And let's get to the next event. Maybe we'll end the episode there. Well, actually, we probably end it here, so. I guess, you know what? We'll finish this off probably in the next episode because I know there's not a whole lot of content here. But, you know, well, we'll see what happens. But if you enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, in which we will explore what else the Governor Governatorato de Levant has in store for us before everything collapses. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.